Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're solving lead code 63, Unique Paths. You are given an M by N integer array grid. There is a robot initially located at the top left corner. The robot tries to move to the bottom right corner, and the robot can only move either down or right at any point in time. An obstacle and a space are marked as 1 or 0, respectively, in the grid. A path that the robot uh, takes cannot include any square that is an obstacle. Return the number of total unique paths that the robot can take to reach the bottom right corner. Okay, so if you haven't already seen my video on unique paths, I'd suggest you watch that one because the algorithm is basically the same. The only thing we have to deal with here are the obstacles, but the way that we're going to approach the problem uh, is going to be exactly the same. And if you didn't watch that video, well, just to give you a quick recap, we basically use uh, DFS and memoization to figure out all the ways that we can actually reach the bottom uh, right corner. The only difference here is that we actually have to take into account um, that a tile can actually be an obstacle. So if we reach that tile, then we can no longer continue down that path. But otherwise, it's basically the same, right? The robot can move uh, in basically just these two directions either down into the right or um, right and then down. And essentially what we want to do is every time we get to a tile, if we've been there before, then we'll actually store the number of unique paths in a memoization dictionary uh, from that tile until the end. And if we've been there before, then we can just take the value out of memo. We don't have to recompute it. If not, we're going to basically store um, our result into memo. So from this current tile, it will be some x, y coordinate. And then what we're going to do is we're basically going to store uh, all the ways that we can get to the end if we were to first go to the right or first go to the left. And then basically we'll just continue. And you know, this is kind of we're going to call our function recursively until either somehow we get outside of the grid, in which case we can stop, or we actually get to the end here uh, and we're done. And since we can only move um, down or to the right, we don't actually have to worry about going back on ourselves and getting caught in an infinite loop. Now, I'm not gonna go through an example because it's relatively straightforward. If you've solved the first one, then you should kind of have an intuition, but basically it's relatively simple. That's the general intuition. Now let's actually go to the code editor and type it up. There's actually just one or two lines different from unique paths one. So this isn't really too much um, of a leap from that problem. Okay, we're in the code editor. Let's now type this up. Since we have some obstacles, we actually need to check a few kind of cases before we get into the algorithm itself to make sure that we can actually find a solution. The first case we need to check is actually if the last position in our grid, aka the bottom right, our target, is an obstacle. If it's an obstacle, then we actually can never reach it. So we should just return zero because there's no path, no way to actually get to the bottom right. So we're going to say if obstacle, obstacle, uh, grid, ah, if obstacle grid of minus one, minus one is equal to one. So if it's an obstacle, then we should simply just return zero. There's another case here that we want to check, and that's if we just have a single row. Now, if there's an obstacle in any place in this single row, uh, in any of the column positions, then there's no way for us to get there, right? If there's a single row, you can just imagine that like if it's 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, there's no way to actually get to the end because there's an obstacle. So if it's a single row grid and we have any obstacles in that grid, then we know that um, it's impossible to us for us to actually get to the end because we can only go to the right when it's a single row. And if there's any obstacle, then it's impossible. If it's a single row and there's no obstacle, then we can actually get there. So let's just check that case. So we're going to say if the length of the obstacle grid actually equals to one, then we want to say return one. So obviously there's only one way we can get there because if it's only one row, we can only go to the right. So there's only one path. So we're going to return one if one is not in uh, obstacle grid of zero, uh, else zero. So if there's no obstacles in that row, then we're good. There's only one path. We just go straight right. Um, otherwise, we return zero because there's no way. OK, now that we got those two edge cases out of the way, now let's actually handle the um, actual logic here. And it's going to be basically the same, uh, where essentially we are just going to have a self.memo dict. And this is going to be um, equal to nothing in the beginning. We're going to call our DFS function, which we'll define uh, in a second. We'll pass. Actually, do we need to pass in the obstacle grid? Probably not. Um, let's see. 
No, it's fine. We'll pass in the obstacle grid uh, M N. Oops. And oops. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, we need to pass zero zero. That's going to be our current position. And then we're going to return uh, self dot memo of zero comma zero. So basically, all the ways that we can get um, to the bottom right from our starting position, which is zero, zero. Now we actually need to implement the DFS function. So we're gonna say def DFS. We're gonna take the grid. We're gonna take our current position M and our current position N. So this is the rows and the columns. Now, the first thing we wanna do, like in the previous problem, we're going to check that we've actually uh, seen our position before. If we have, it should be in the memo dict. We can just return the answer. We don't need to recompute it. So we're gonna say if M comma N in self dot memo uh, what are we going to do here we're going to return self dot memo of m comma n okay perfect now what we need to do is we actually need to double check that um, we're at the end of the grid right if we're at the end of the grid then we can simply uh, return one here if not then we just continue right so if we're actually at the very end of the grid so if m equals to the length of grid uh, minus one and n equals to the length of ah, I hate this keyboard uh, length of the grid of m minus one so basically if we're at the bottom right uh, then we return one because we've now found one path from whatever the part uh, previous tile was so we can return one otherwise we actually need to actually go through the grid now, similar to the previous problem, we need to make sure that we're actually not leaving the bounds of the grid. Otherwise, you know, then we can potentially have an infinite solution here. We want to make sure that we actually stay within um, whatever the dimensions of our grid here is. So we're going to say, so we need to check the columns. So we're going to say as long as the columns are greater than or equal to zero and less than the length of the grid. And we want to check that the rows, or sorry, that the uh, that was checking the uh, I think that's the rows and now we're going to check the columns as well so n needs to be less uh, greater than or equal to zero and less than the length of grid of m um, and then also we need to make sure that the the next position that we're moving to is not an obstacle if it's an obstacle then there's no point of exploring it because we can't go any further from there so we actually want to make sure that our next position um, is actually equal to or our current position is actually equal to um, a free square otherwise we can't continue from here so we need to make sure that grid m of n actually equals to zero so if all three of those conditions are correct so basically if we're within the grid and our current position is a valid tile then we can continue and we know that um, self.memo so from here uh, whoops self.memo of m comma n from here it's going to be all the ways that we can get um, basically from this square by going to the right and we're going down. So that's the ways that we can get to the end from our current tile. So we're gonna say self.dfs of, we pass in the grid, we're gonna play m plus one. So we're gonna increment the rows and then we're gonna keep the column the same plus self.dfs of grid. And we're gonna pass in m n plus one. Okay, so now we have basically, that's the operation here. Otherwise, um, we'll just store that this point is not reachable. So in case we get here again, uh, we don't want to actually do anything. So we'll simply just set that equal to zero in case that we're in an invalid place. And then we can simply just return uh, self dot memo of m comma n. Okay, so that should be it. Let me make sure I didn't make any bugs. My keyboard was lagging for some reason. It seems fine. Okay, perfect. Accepted. So, um, what is the time and space complexity? Well, similar to the previous problem, the time complexity is going to be big O of M times N, uh, where M and N are the dimension dimensions of the grid. And the reason it's m by n is because you can actually get a grid that has no obstacles. So like the previous problem, we're gonna have to traverse every single position in the grid. Um, so that means that it's going to be big O of m times n. For the space complexity, it's also m uh, times n because we need 
to store every position in our memo dict. And in the case that there's no obstacles, then we're gonna have to store every single position. There is actually a solution here where you can actually just use the grid itself um, to store the values. So it can basically just act as a memo dict because you could just use the, the grid position of M and N and overwrite its value with uh, the value that you know you got instead of sending it to memo. This assumes that you can actually um, overwrite the input, something you can ask your interviewer if he says, okay, you can overwrite the, the provided grid, then sure, you can do that. If not, then you'll just have to use a memo dict. So technically you can get a big O of one space solution, uh, but since we don't know whether or not we can actually overwrite the um, input here, we just decided to be safe and use memoization dictionary. Okay, so that is enough blabbing. Hopefully you found this video useful. It's a not too far off uh, the first problem there was a few extra edge cases we needed to um, handle just need to make sure that we're actually uh, able to reach the bottom right and then also how to handle uh, these obstacles but the algorithm is basically the same just a simple dfs through a uh, 2d matrix and we're adding some memoization in to just prevent us from recomputating uh, recalculating the same calculation over and over again anyway that's enough uh, blabbing if you enjoyed the video like and comment uh, and subscribe, of course, uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.